Hello everybody, this is Ben Baxter with Accent Software, bringing you a quick tip or training session on item tracking codes within Business Central. What we're gonna be talking about is how you track lot numbers or serial numbers for items. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look up item tracking codes. Microsoft provides a sample set of codes that you can use. Some are for tracking everything, the inbound and the outbound of the items, which is pretty good when you're considering what you're tracking. But you also have the option of doing, in this case, an outbound only tracking. So for a serialized item, you buy it, it comes into inventory, there's no serial number assigned or you don't track it at that point. As you can see, the only tracking turned on is for serial number sales tracking on the outbound side and also on the inbound, so if there's a sales return. But everything else for serial numbers is turned off, meaning if I buy this item, it comes in, so that's an inbound purchase tracking, and it doesn't have any serial number requirements. But when I go to sell the item, I would have to record a serial number. Now in this case, the serial number specific tracking is turned off because there is no existing serial number at the time of that outbound transaction. For most cases, both lot number and serial number, you're gonna want the specific tracking turned on to ensure that when you sell the item or you consume the item, that you are consuming out of the specific lot number or serial number that it was received into. You have to select and it will assign and keep track of the quantities available within each given lot or serial number. Now to show this, I wanna to go to our purchase order and we'll just do a sample receipt of two items. One will be serial number tracked, the other will be lot number tracked. So you can see I have my two items, serial number, we're receiving five of them and for the lot number tracking 300. And so when I'm on a given line, I'm gonna come up to the line button or the line menu and then click item tracking lines. And this opens up a separate table where I can now define, so I have undefined five, I want to define the serial numbers for those items. Now in my case, these are serialized by us and so I can come in and say create customized serial number or just simply assign serial number and it will create the five. Now this will use a number series that has a predefined serial number sequence that I'm going to add to the items. If I don't want to do that and I want it to be custom, then I use this create custom and as long as it ends in a digit that is a number, then it will increment up from there. If I was going to have the serial numbers come from my vendor, the person that provided the items, I simply enter the serial number in here this way. So we can actually do it both ways. So we'll do 7845612, just a random serial number and we'll give it a quantity of one. And then for the rest of them, we'll do the assigned serial numbers. It knows there's four left, so we'll say okay. And you can see my XYZ0001. That is the sequence of events on my number series for this particular item. And you can define different number series for serial numbers per item if you wanted to. And it assigns the quantities for me when I run either the assign or the create custom. And then you can also note that in my undefined list, it's all blank now. So I've gone ahead and defined all five serial numbers. And I simply close it. It records that to the system. Lot numbers is very similar. I go to the same place, the item tracking lines. The difference is I'm not doing it on a quantity of one. I suppose you could, but you would rather use serial numbers in that case. Lot numbers define a group of items. And so in my case, we could do this is lot 0004, and there are 100 units in that lot. And then I can do lot five, and we'll do 100 units in that. And then I could come down and do lot six and 100 in that. And so I have defined of the 300 units being received, they are in three separate lots. And the system will track these lots, including the quantities, as I consume, as long as I have the lot specific tracking turned on, it will consume out of the defined lots. If you do have your lot specific tracking turned off, the system will use a FIFO consumption, meaning 
it will consume out of the first lot regardless of which lot you pulled from. So that's why I say the lot specific tracking, having that turned on is super critical when you want to track the actual quantity of the lot that you have in inventory. That's how the lot tracking works. I simply close that and now that these are fully defined, I can simply post the receipt and that will bring those items into my inventory and I can then consume them on a sales side. And the same is true, so we'll go and actually do a sales document. Uh, let's do a sales order. And what we're gonna do is we're going to consume, let's say one of those serial numbers or maybe two of those serial numbers out of the system. So we'll go ahead and pick a customer and then we'll come down and grab our item, which is the serial number item. If we give this a quantity of three, the system is expecting me to then enter three serial numbers. Again, I come up to line, in this case, it's related information item tracking lines. In this case, I'm gonna say select entries. Because this is serial number specific, I have to pick from my existing serial numbers. I can simply key it in if I know it, but I'm gonna say select entries and you'll see what it does if I widen this window. It pulls from the first one. So that random one that I entered, it's selected that one by default. Now, if that's not the case, I can simply change the numbers here, right? So let's say we pull out of our XYZ serial numbers. So one, two, and three, then I say, okay. That way it assigns those to the lines and it will keep my inventory accurate with what I have still available. So now I'll have my random one and the XYZ4. So then we'll put in a work date, we'll do our past work date and we'll go ahead and ship this. And that's it. I have now reduced my inventory, forgot my external document. So I do have to, I have in my system that I require a PO number. That's a nice feature if you actually require that. If you don't, then it can be a nuisance because you do have to enter something in order to post that shipment. So in this case, I've, I've entered my PO and I've now reduced my inventory by three of the five and it's reduced those specific serial numbers out of my system. So that's item tracking in a nutshell. Now I did a very simple case of a purchase order and a sales order, so a buy and a sell. You can buy and consume to production, to assembly, to projects. I can produce out of my manufacturing system or my assembly system a lot number or a serial number tracked item and then sell it. I can transfer it between warehouses. Item tracking is throughout the system if you have it enabled for the item. So that's how that works. I hope that was helpful and, and get you guided on the right path with item tracking. If you have questions on this or Business Central in general, feel free to give us a call. We at Accent Software love to help people out, help them utilize their system better. So I'll have our contact information up on screen. By all means, reach out to us and let's start a conversation.